Although self unloaders have been the norm on the Great Lakes since the early 1990s, such was not always the case. Prior to 1902, no such thing existed. Oddly, the birth of the self unloading freighter has its seeds planted in a horrific fire. The blaze took place on June 27, 1902. Here in Buffalo, at a place known as Tiff Farm, which is today a popular nature preserve. A century ago, however, it looked like this. The blaze happened here. This was the westbound terminus of the Lehigh Valley Railroad's cargo operations. The building was 800 feet long, 135 feet wide, and loaded with tons of package cargo brought in by lake boats. When the fire broke out, there were 270 workmen in the building and 20 office workers on the second floor. In less than 10 minutes, the entire structure was in flames. Amazingly, everyone got out of the building. Some jumped from the pier into the Blackwell Canal to save themselves. Others leaped aboard a lake freighter that had been unloading at the pier. That wooden steamer was the 209-foot package freighter Hennypen. Of course, jumping aboard her didn't do any good, because just seconds after they landed on her deck, the Hennypen was also afire. Captain Charles D. Ross ordered her lines let go, and the prevailing winds blew the boat away from the burning building. But it was too late. Everyone aboard jumped into the canal and swam for the opposite shore. In just one hour, the entire building collapsed, and the hennypen was left a smoldering hulk as a local fireboat sprayed her with water. Only one person died in this disaster, and that was a dock worker who had jumped from the dock onto the hennypen and then into the canal. He was a poor swimmer and didn't make it to the opposite shore. Oddly, this was the hennypen's second fire in exactly one month. She caught fire on Upper Lake Michigan on May 27th. But with the aid of the iron-hulled steamer Cuba, the Hennypen's engine room fire was contained, and only minor damage took place. This time, however, the fire damage was so bad that her owners declared her a total loss, and she went up for auction on January 29, 1902. Captain C.R. Davis won the auction for the Lakeshore Stone Company, and the hulk of the Hennypen was towed to the Buffalo Dry Dock of Bakeman, McDougall, and Palmer on January 30th. That small shipyard was located at the foot of Genesee Street. Here. The work was not easy, but followed the design of Frank N. Merrill, the general manager of the Lakeshore Stone Company. First, the crew needed to clear away all of the fire damaged timbers. Next, a new hull had to be constructed atop the remains of the original vessel. Then a series of longitudinal hoppers 165 feet in length and half the width of the hold had to be constructed between the forward and aft bulkheads. There was one on each side, and they would allow cargo to drop down onto a 24-inch wide conveyor belt below each hopper. The two hull conveyors dumped into a common hopper at the stern of the boat and fed a series of belts that placed the cargo onto a conveyor boom which sent the cargo over the side and ashore. A single upright 40 horsepower steam engine drove all of the unloading machinery and took its steam from the boat's main boilers. She had a cargo capacity of 1,250 tons and could unload at a rate of 400 tons per hour, although her owners boasted that she could do 500 tons per hour. Her normal unloading time was just over three hours. Amazingly, in just three months and nine days, the wreck of the Hennypen was completely converted and became the first self-unloading bulk carrier on the lakes. She departed the shipyard in Buffalo on May 9, 1902, headed for Sandusky, Ohio, and a load of coal. Once more under the command of Captain Ross, she arrived at Racine, Wisconsin on the 13th and unloaded her cargo of coal. And then she went into the stone business. Her owners were quick to advertise their new and unique boat, which was intended to make short-haul stone deliveries along the Lake Michigan shore. By 1906, the Hennypen had become so successful 
that the Lakeshore Stone Company took their 228-foot wooden steamer, Topeka, and gave her the exact same self-unloader conversion.